How do you react when you find a bug in your house? If it's just a moth or an ant, maybe it's not so bad. A little scary, perhaps, but not the end of the world. Here's the question, though. How do things change if instead of an ordinary insect, it's a scorpion that you find crawling around in your room? For most people, this crosses the line. As the nightmarish combination of pinching claws, a venomous stinger, and a deadly reputation makes these alien-looking arachnids some of the most widely feared animals on Earth. However, there is another side of scorpions that most people never get to see, and it proves them to be among our planet's most misunderstood and fascinating creatures. There's only one way to experience it, though, by putting ourselves and the scorpions to the ultimate test. My name is Evan, and this is Harrison. We're twin brothers following our dream to share the true life stories of the animals we love to help you become an insider in the natural world. Tonight, we are exploring a working horse ranch, and while it may not sound like an ideal location to look for scorpions, this place represents the epicenter of the conflict between scorpions and people. This area contains a mix of natural and developed habitats that are utilized by both humans and a wide diversity of animals. And with so much wildlife living in close proximity to people, conflict is bound to occur. Scorpions are particularly concerning for the residents here because they'll frequently move into human areas like barns and houses, so interactions between these arachnids and people are all but inevitable. We recognize that scorpions are scary to people because of their intimidating appearance and unfamiliar lifestyle, but our experience with these animals paints a totally different picture. We've worked with bark scorpions in the wild before, and throughout all of our interactions, they were nothing but placid and gentle. We wanted to find out if the experience we had holds up in a place where human-scorpion conflicts are a real everyday issue, but to do that, we first have to find one. We started our search by poking around some patches of natural vegetation, and in an ecosystem this diverse, it doesn't take long to encounter some incredible wildlife. Within just a few minutes of searching, I spotted something really cool. Yo, check this out. Oh, these guys are great. All right, this is not our target, but it is one of the coolest insects we can find here on the ranch. This is a leprous grasshopper. And one of the first things you'll notice when you look at these guys is how striking their coloration is. And that's actually one of their best defense mechanisms against predation. Those are warning colors, aposomatic coloration, that basically tells a predator that this is a toxic species that you wouldn't want to mess with. If that warning coloration doesn't do the trick to keep predators away, they have another really interesting defense mechanism that actually has to do with their wings. So they do have wings, it's that piece of their exoskeleton right there. And what's interesting is they're actually too small to even help this grasshopper fly but what they are useful for is making a really loud hissing sound. It's called stridulation. And for a small predator, that might give them just a brief enough scare that it gives the grasshopper a chance to get away. Despite the fact that they may look a little bit intimidating, you can see how gentle this animal is being. It's not giving us any sign of defensiveness whatsoever. And that's so often the case when we're working with invertebrates, it's just the reputation that they receive that causes people to fear them, but that really doesn't match the reality of how these animals behave. Now, this isn't our target species for the night, so I think we'll let him get back into its habitat. If he can continue about his night, we will continue our search for scorpions. Bark scorpions can be tricky to track down because they spend a fair amount of time on the ground, but they're also incredible climbers. So we had to carefully scan each patch of plants, rock pile, and structure we encountered to ensure that we didn't walk right past our target. You're bound to come across other species when you're searching this methodically, and that's exactly what happened when Harrison flipped some promising looking rocks. Rock piles like this can be a really good spot to find all sorts of animals actually, hopefully. A scorpion or something. Nothing under there, though. Uh, I'll put that back, actually. I don't want to disturb this too much. Oh, look at this! There's a spot belly snake under here! Yes! That is a swift spot-bellied snake. One of the really cool things about these snakes is that much like the scorpions we're looking for, though there are a lot of myths and a lot of fear surrounding snakes here in Ecuador, this is not an animal you have to worry about at all. 
I was able to pick this guy up literally as soon as I saw it because this is a non-venomous animal. They're known to be quite placid when handled, and he would mostly be out here feeding on small lizards and frogs, and as he gets larger, they can even take down small mammals. I'm always happy to see another species of snake here in Ecuador and a cool little bit of bycatch as we're out here looking for scorpions. After releasing the spot-bellied snake back under its rock, we scanned the area for more cover to flip. This had been the most productive way to find scorpions over the previous few days, but of course, now that we needed one to film, they were nowhere to be found. Luckily, we spotted some old wooden pallets that looked absolutely perfect for a scorpion to be hanging out in, and after flipping the first one, we were not disappointed. <clears throat> Scorpion. All right. right. Oh, I see him. All right. Decent size. All right. So yeah. he came out of here. Yep. Drop that down. Right there. Beautiful. That is a Central American bark scorpion. And I actually have a container. If you keep the light on him. Yep. I think this should be a pretty straightforward catch. All right, buddy. We just want to take a quick look at you. This container is only a temporary arrangement, but it's just the fastest way. There we go. To Thanks. get them under control so you can take a closer look. So we have a very cool scorpion here. This is the Central American Bark Scorpion. And this animal is actually quite interesting. It is part of the group of scorpions, the Bark Scorpions, which some of you may have heard of because these animals have quite the reputation for being among the most venomous scorpions that exist in the Americas, and in fact, throughout the entire world. Now, I do want to point out that the sting of this animal would not be lethal to a person by any means. It would be quite painful, definitely not something you want to experience, but right off the bat, the sting of the Central American bark scorpion would not kill a person. Now, I think we should probably get it out of the container here. I agree. Let's see if we have like a little stick. Or st Actually, this will probably do. We just want to get it onto this piece of bark first and get it nice and calm. And you'll see immediately that the temperament of this animal is not at all aggressive. This is not a species that has any interest in interacting with a human. It's probably more confused than anything. These animals are nocturnal, so they really only come out at night. And during that time, they will be feeding on a pretty impressive variety of prey. So as we often talk about with these venomous animals, just like their claws and their legs and their eyes, their venom is not a weapon that they use to hurt us. It's the tool that they use to help them survive. Now, one thing I really want to do is actually see if he's going to crawl right on my hand here. There we go. This is what we wanted to show about these animals. They have no interest whatsoever in using what little precious venom they do have in that stinger up there to attack a person. If he were feeling agitated at all, he'd have his tail upright with that stinger postured ready to inject me with that neurotoxic venom that they possess. He'd be reaching out with those pedipalps, trying to pinch me. But right now, he's just actually, he's exploring a little higher up on my shoulder than it would be easy for me to reach. There you go, bro. There we are. Now, what we really want to explain about this animal is that just like any other invertebrate, Scorpions want to stay out of your way. They have absolutely no reason to approach or even attempt to attack a person. If you think about it, that doesn't even make sense. This animal is minuscule compared to us. It would have no shot in a fight, per se. So all they want to do is either stay out of your way or get out of your way if they are uncovered. There's nothing to fear from these animals, as you can see. They serve a very important role in the ecosystem as that kind of generalist nocturnal predator with all the prey that this animal would be able to take down. And as long as we're not pinning it, as long as we're not bringing it too close to our faces, this animal will not feel threatened. And therefore, we have nothing to worry about in terms of taking this thing. I am actually fascinated by scorpions. As am I. I think they are one of the most alien looking animals you can find. Definitely. They're super unique, but that I think makes them cool, not scary. We talk about this all the time with invertebrates. 
These animals are different from us in the way that they live, in the way that they communicate, in the way that they get around. They are quite bizarre, look at this. These animals are incredible climbers. And this is the attitude that we've seen from pretty much every scorpion we've ever handled. Ooh. Hi there. Can you get him off your back? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Check this out. There we are. That's why it helps to have two of us, because we can not let it get down That's my right. shirt. They do move very quickly. It's easy for them to shoot right up our arm, as you just saw. So, never attempt to handle yes. any scorpion that you come across. They're a beautiful animal that's worth taking a second look at. But under no circumstances should any person try to handle one of these animals on your own simply because it's not necessary. Yeah, that's a really good point. And the thing is, even if you were to encounter one, as long as you give them the respect that they deserve, you give them a little bit of space, you have absolutely nothing to worry about from a scorpion like this. You can just appreciate them from a distance as the fascinating creatures that they are, and they will leave you well enough alone. Absolutely. So we are gonna get this guy back off under his board, so hopefully he can get a meal in and get back to whatever it was he was doing before we encountered him. But I hope that this is proven, that scorpions are not the monsters that they are made out to be. They are actually one of the coolest invertebrates that we can find out here in Ecuador, and an absolute treat to get to handle like this. All right, buddy, you're going home. Thanks for being such a good sport. We'll just hop down. Perfect. That is what we love to see, animals getting back into their home. And we got an incredible encounter. I couldn't be happier. Scorpions are not an easy animal for people to love, but it's important to remember that they belong in this ecosystem and serve a complex and vital role within it, even though the hardware they use is a bit intimidating to a lot of us. Our goal with sharing our interactions with misunderstood species like scorpions is to help people find ways to tolerate and even respect the wildlife that they fear. Because when we're able to appreciate even the scariest of animals, we have all the more reason to protect the incredible planet we share with them. If you want to meet another infamous invertebrate and find out why their reputation is totally undeserved, check out this video where we get up close and personal with the Eastern Velvet Ant one of North America's most iconic wasps. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. A scorpion in a container is better than a scorpion in a bush? I don't think that's how it goes.